Hi guys, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, I have received another email regarding our life contracts. So this video, how do life contracts work? I hope it explains something for you that gives us some indication of our life purpose. Okay, lovely Arlette, thank you so much again. She's emailed me and I do encourage people to email me with your questions. And if you give me consent to use your name, I will. Otherwise, I'll just say I had an email from a person and keep you anonymous. OK, so today is a sort of follow up to the video that I did yesterday regarding our why do ghosts stay as ghosts? Why don't the angels, etc., come down and help these souls to progress over to the heavenly plane. OK, so I'll let states I'm reading her email here on my screen. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your response to your video, Rishelly. OK, first off there, I'll let no, don't thank me. Thank them. I am just the communications ad advisor here. I'm just sharing and educating their knowledge and their love and their support that we have for us. OK, so thank you so much. I am just that communication device. I am their channel to get this word out there. OK, I listened to it about five times to really allow the answers to sink in. Thank you so much for watching me again. I just got a notification from YouTube. A lady's just watched my video about spirit guides. And I did that about what four, six years ago, um, four, eight months ago, that one. So please go back through my list of videos, guys, and look at all the videos that I've done in the past to get your answers there as well. OK, a few more questions popped in my mind as I was listening. OK, let's go there. One is when a person dies suddenly, as Shelley did and becomes a ghost, did the person sign up before their birth? that this is what they wanted to experience. Now, this sentence, I've got to break it down. When a person dies suddenly, like Shelley did, Shelley died in a car accident um, back in the 1970s. Firstly, she's been roaming around the world looking for someone to take her to the hospital to see her friend Dave, who survived the car accident. She told me that she saw the ambulances come. She thought she, she was watching over Dave. She was looking down at Dave with all this blood on his face, etc. And the paramedics put him on the stretcher or the gurney, put him in the ambulance and took him away. But they didn't take her. Why didn't they take her? Because she obviously perished in that car accident. She was a ghost. Because what happened? Because she had that sudden death, like car accidents, um, other accidents that we unfortunately have occur to us. She did not know that she had died. OK, so that's why a lot of ghosts do stay here, especially the ones who don't know that they've passed over. They die suddenly in some sort of accident, etc., where they didn't want to die that day. So when she became a ghost, did the person sign up before their birth that this is what they wanted to experience? I actually believe in my own personal opinion, we don't contract ourselves to become a ghost. OK, because ghosts, firstly, are stuck between the three dimensional world and heaven. OK, which is scientifically trying to be proven here and all the theories out there as to how our soul goes to this heavenly place. Where is heaven? There's people out there like Chris Marshall. Thank you, Chris. I know you're going to watch this one. Thank you, Chris, for doing your research and trying to find out, is it a physical location where we actually go to? OK, so there's a lot of questions out there. OK, so um, did she actually sign up before her life? to have this. So first of all, we have to understand what are life contracts. Life contracts are something that we agree to before we're born while we're still at heaven. So if we don't go to heaven like Shelley 
obviously is, she's still a ghost. So she cannot say her life contract for her next life yet because she hasn't gone to heaven where she can reincarnate, okay? Because we don't reincarnate unless we go to heaven and do it because it's all in that mix of that place. Where is that place of where we go, right? So I firmly do not believe Sally si um, Shelley signed up for this, okay? Because our life contracts are for our life. It's things that we want to do in this three-dimensional being, this entity, this body that I am now encompassing as Linda. So I signed up for what would happen to me during my life, okay? When I died in 2001 and I went to heaven for what I call five years, that five years that I was in that place for that appeared as five years even though on, on earth time it could have just been a split second but when I was there I didn't contract myself to what I learned there okay but I firmly believe that people who do have a near-death experience we do contract these into our um um, timeline of our existence we say in our life contract um, just follow me here guys we agree that we're going to be born because a lot of people don't be born miscarriages abortions etc occur okay so I agreed that I was going to be born I w agreed that I was going to be a sickly child I, w I agreed that I'd be in this family where we jetted all over the world with my dad in the armed forces and I'd go to all these different schools I agreed that I would be married to this first person who taught me all these lessons, okay? Then I agreed through this life contract that I would travel over to America from Australia and I would be involved with this man who gave me an opportunity to go home, not so much for what I'd learned there, but to experience that opportunity of being connected back to it. So when I woke up in the co from my coma in 2001 at the Cabarrus Hospital in New um, North Carolina, I then knew that I had contracted myself so I would relearn all the stuff that we forget from one life to the next because we all have past lives, right? So <coughs> just follow me. <coughs> that I pre contracted before my birth that I would die and wake up so it was a near-death experience it wasn't just a death experience end of the story end of the line type thing but I would come back and share that information with others okay Shelly on the other hand she did pass so she has a death and now she's stuck where she can't go forward okay we all have a soul contract. This is now from our let's, our let's email again. We all have a soul contract, correct? Yes, we do, Arlette. We all sign up a contract, okay? So did all of Shelley's heavenly guides, guardians and angels, etc. say something like, okay, if you really want to become a lost wandering ghost after the car accident, so be it. First off, I'll let you've got something right there, okay, in my belief. When we go up to heaven and we're realigning our next life contract, we can say what we want through free will. And that is why they, angels, guides and angels would say, well, if you really want to do something, so be it, okay? So she obviously said in her life contract that she was going to die when she was 17 years old because Shelley was only 17 when she died okay so she contracted her life would end at 17 years of age but she I don't believe that she actually contracted to become this lost wandering soul looking for the answers of her life because when we have a life contract we're agreeing do we have a birth or a conceivement okay we are conceived because some people don't make it out of the womb right and then we have this life and then we die 
that's the end of it because then we go back to heaven and we align another one so what are the life contracts let me grab my book my book is five years in heaven the teachings of heaven look how thick it is so i've got a chapter in here about life lessons and life contracts let me just scroll through okay commonly asked questions karma life lessons here we go life contract chapter 15 and it starts on page 187 okay so this is reading about corina my great 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 grandmother who taught me all about this stuff so this is now an excerpt straight from my book she outlined to me that every soul who wishes to reincarnate does get the free will to decide what it is that they will do in their existence. Shelley had her existence until she was 17. Then she died. So now that she is existing in a different reality, which is the ghost um, experience, her life contract is not involved in that, okay? From planning which family we went into, the date of our birth, the country we're born and what financial situation our family has at the time of our birth, we can agree to all of those things. Okay? Okay? Just like signing a contract, we can add and delete clauses within those contracts also. So that's why we have these near deaths. We can contract in these sub-clauses in our contract where we say, you know what? Um, I want some out. I want some um, end dates of this contract where I can... How many times in our lives do we have that close call? Damn, how did I survive that plane crash? How did I survive that car accident? Now, these are real experiences for me, okay? When I was 20, I was involved in a car accident. I hit a bridge. Don't ever do that. My car condensed to three foot wide, and that's the day I broke my neck. Because if you know about me, I've got a broken neck. C2, C3 are not connected in my neck. Okay, so that day was one of my sub clauses where I could actually leave if I wanted to under my own free will. But I decided that day that I still wanted to live. When I survived the plane crash going over to Japan um, in the late 1990s, that was another sub clause for me. If I'd wished to die in that event, I could have because it was one of my sub clauses where if I don't want to keep going, I could escape this reality go to heaven and reincarnate into a new life contract okay so we have these sub clauses where we can decide if we do want to leave Shelley I believe thoroughly she did not want to die when she was 17 her body though was so messed up whatever happened to her in that car accident it perished but her soul is keeping going because it didn't want to die at that moment, okay? So we don't remember our, soul, our life contracts. We don't remember them. We don't remember all those subclauses, etc., that we've put in there. So Shelley, when she passed at 17, she didn't want to die that day, even though her body did. So she has now stayed on the earth looking for someone to take her to the hospital to see how Dave was, who was the driver of the car, and the ambulance took him away. She was so disheartened, so upset, so brokenhearted that he went to the hospital and she didn't either. Okay? So um, let me just go through here and... Okay, so here we go, still on page 187. But Karina made it very clear to me, extremely clear to me that our contracts are based on what lessons we wanted to learn or reevaluate in the next life we lead. So not only are our life contracts about our lessons, now our lessons could be something like generosity. So let me explain this one. If we contract ourselves to learn generosity, is that going to mean that we're going to be born into a rich family where we can we have that opportunity opportunity right to go out and give money to the homeless are we learning how to be generous no generosity will be us contracting ourselves to be a homeless man with nothing to our name so we sit on the side of the street asking people for money 
30 cents here, 10 cents there, a dollar from this stranger. So that is then learning the value of generosity. Okay, not so much the money that they give us, but it's the kindness and that generosity that that person is emitting. Okay, then on the other hand, we may be broke, absolutely down to our last dollar. We walk past that same guy sitting on the street. Would you be willing to give that guy your last dollar? Would that be generosity to be learned? So it's not about just being put into an opportunity where we're rich. It's being without it to learn the value of what we achieve. Okay? So Shelley did not have that opportunity when she passed over to go to heaven and then reevaluate re those lessons. Okay? And what I mean there by reevaluate, we may come back here into 16,000 lives just to work, work out that one lesson of generosity. Okay, so life contracts, I want to go there. They can be extremely hard to understand. Let's just go there with a couple of sensitive issues here. Now, please know if I do trigger you, if I do make you upset, it is not my intention at all. My intention here is to educate. Okay, if this does make you at all uneasy or worse, please talk about it to somebody contact me my email is below in the description go and seek professional medical help if this does trigger you okay so the first one that i want to cover here is abortions and miscarriages children who do not have that opportunity to be born okay they contracted themselves to have that why my firm belief here is Imagine the mother carrying that child for a few months. She is learning unconditional love. She is learning how to look after somebody else. She is So there's the caring, compassion, understanding, all these lessons. And then how do we learn it unless it's taken away? So we can look at the mother, the family of that person who was pregnant, okay? Then we've got to look at the child themselves. Why would anyone sign up to not be born? Now, how do we learn self-love unless our love is taken away? How do we learn self-sacrifice? Self-sacrifice. Unless that child is willing to give up all they have to allow someone else to have a better life. The next issue that I want to go into is murders. Please, if this triggers you, please go and talk to somebody about it, okay? Please know I am not a medical doctor here. I have a PhD, which gives me a doctorate before my name. Go and talk to someone if this triggers you. We've got to look at the person who murders and the person who is murdered. What's going through the head of the person who does those horrible acts? What lessons do they need to learn? There are millions of lessons that they could be learning. How to understand somebody else's perspective. They could be learning how to be generous. How do we learn how to be generous until we take it away from somebody else? How do we learn how to be loving unless it's taken away from us? Then we look at the person who is murdered. Did they sign up for that? Absolutely. And this is how we can learn forgiveness. This is how we can love, learn to appreciate that short life that person had before that horrible event. So we can't judge, we can't ex have any expectations why things happen. Because there's two things here about life lessons, which are in our life contract. One, it's lessons that we must learn. Secondly, it's the lessons that we teach to someone else how can I learn how can I possibly teach someone else to value their life to live their life to the fullest unless I'm a child who died at a young age so then that elder person looks back and says wow they had such a short life 
They didn't get the opportunity to do that, do that, do that, do that. But I am here and I am this old and I have that opportunity. I'm still living for another day. So that's where we learn these lessons from somebody else. Okay? So that in a nutshell is what we can contract ourselves to. We contract ourselves to learning the lessons like generosity, kindness, appreciation, value, respect, trust. Trust. Okay? So back to our let's email here. So did all of Shelley's heavenly guides, um, etc. Say if you really want to become a lost wandering ghost after a car accident, so be it. I don't believe they would have said that to her. But they would have said, yes, you can be a child to die at 17. Because the lesson there was probably not for her. Think about her parents losing a 17-year-old in a car accident. Could that be teaching them something? Any of those lessons. So they learn how to accept them. And most of all, to forgive. How do we learn to forgive unless something is done to us? That we don't approve of okay okay who in their right mind would want that now this is where our uh, let i love that you've said it like that but we've got to remember here we don't judge we never accuse why somebody does what they do okay i love referring back to um Adolf hitler people say oh my god did he actually contract himself to be this horrible man who killed millions of people in world war ii of course he did and we've got to remember here he was not all bad he had a girlfriend ava brown she must have seen some qualities in him generosity kindness love appreciation respect trust imagine what she saw from that different perspective okay and then what were the lessons that he not only taught to others around him, but even today, 100 years later, what is he still teaching us? He's teaching us lessons of how not to be judgmental, how not to be a RAC-IST, because I can't say that word on YouTube, I'll get black banned. He's learning us how not to be judgmental of different races creeds religions he's teaching us how to be unified loving kind and most of all patient with other people around us so if someone said to me in heaven hey linda do you want the opportunity where you can go down to heaven and you can teach millions and millions of people life lessons damn i think i would sign up for that what an honour, what a privilege that would be where you're in this position where other people learn how to be better people. We look at mass murderers over the years. You know, the big one here we have in, here in Australia is Ted Bundy. Look at the lessons he taught the rest of us, how to be um, looking after our children, how to be more um, secure, how to be more... Um, assured in ourselves so we don't know why these people did it personally so we've got to take all those why where's how's when what the heck did he do that for we don't expect we don't judge we just allow people to do what they want because we don't know what lessons they one have to learn themselves or two the lessons that they teach to others okay <clears throat> so I let beautiful beautiful email thank you so much for replying to me so quickly okay so our life contracts guys I've got it more in my book it is available on Lulu the link is below if you want a hard copy look how thick it is or you can go in and get the PDF version it's cheaper okay um, it's available on Lulu the link is below I explain it all our life lessons you know what is important to us it's not how much money we have. It's not about the biggest boat, the biggest car, the biggest house, the biggest, the biggest wardrobe of shoes. It comes down to our emotions. Our emotions are what drives us to be better people. Okay? So I hope that's answered your questions today. 
Okay, if you do have questions for me, please email me. My link is below my email address. Contact me and hopefully you'll see yourself in a video. Okay, talk to you all soon guys. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.